Hey guys, it's time again for another episode of My Secret Atheist Podcast. This week we've got a fun conversation with musician, comedian, and YouTuber, Linda Beatty. She's on Skype all the way from Australia. The intro song to this episode is As Colorful As Ever by Broke For Free. The outro song is Behind The Seas by Posimist. Both are available over at freemusicarchive.org. I have to apologize about my voice. I have a terrible cold that will not go away. But now, without further ado, here's my talk with Linda Beattie. When I was researching you, actually, uh, yeah. I made a mistake of just typing in Linda Beatty, and I'll ah, caution- did you get the porn star? Right, I'll, there's a porn star. Yeah, I'll, I'll caution the the reader <laughs> unless they're interested in that sort of thing. I'll caution yeah. the listeners that you need to type Linda Beatty comedy in to really yes, get do. the right place. Uh, I mean, otherwise, you know, you might still be impressed by what you get, but it's not me. I promise, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> For our esteemed <laughs> listeners, I did check it out, and it is indeed not <laughs> just Linda <laughs> Beatty. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some people say, "Oh, did you know there's a porn star?" I'm like, "Yes, yes, I did." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> I found this. I guess it's your agent, and they were talking about how you have a diploma of music from Griffith University's renowned Queensland yeah, yeah, Conservatory yeah. of Music and how you've yeah. been actually studying the harp since the tender age of 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that must be an old agent still has stuff up. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's all true. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and so you basically, uh, you've been playing the harp for a while and you've yep. been playing professionally. But then uh, just recently, uh, you started up your uh, YouTube channel and website. Yeah. Um, what, I, I guess, what led you towards uh, wanting to do that? You know, I'd, I'd been doing stand-up comedy for a while, for about seven years by the time I started the web show. And I noticed that my comedy was more and more having atheist stuff in it. And I'd always been a passionate atheist due to my upbringing. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get online and actually contribute to atheism in my own way, using my own skills, which just happens to be the harp singing and stand-up comedy. Um, and I, I wanted to reach a global audience and thought, well, YouTube's probably the way to do that. So you were doing co comedy for a while. Um, quite a, not That's an understatement. Seven years. Yeah. Wow. So you started out with a sort of a classical background. Completely. With, I see Celtic here. This is really ancient. I guess this, yeah. maybe this agent uh, thinks that if someone gives them, them a call, <laughs> they can maybe reach out to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, look, I, I actually started playing the piano at four because my, my parents are both classical musicians playing in an orchestra. And then at 12, I was told I had to choose my second instrument, which would be my career. I was like, whoa, okay, no pressure. And I chose the harp because it was the only thing in my family that nobody knew anything about. So I thought I'll play that. That might give me a bit of leeway. And just, you know, found that I loved playing the harp. I loved singing with it. And then I think at about age 19, when I got into singing school, I started my own business at the same time, playing the harp and singing at weddings and concerts and funerals, not so fun, but all of that sort of thing. And so when I started stand-up, music and the harp was already such a, such a part of me that it felt odd to walk on stage without the harp. So I thought, oh, look, I'll just bring it on with me and see what happens. And luckily, luckily it worked. It could have been a disaster in comedy, but it worked. I, I've never, <laughs> I've never heard of, I mean, I've heard of uh, all kinds of things being brought onto stage, like watermelons and yep, what yep. have you, but harps, <laughs> uh, I've never yeah. heard of that. You come from a family of musicians. Yeah, totally. Yeah, everyone, my, my parents, my aunts, my uncles, most of my cousins now, everyone, almost everyone are musicians, yeah, and but classical or jazz musicians. So I'm quite different now. 
<laughs> going into comedy <laughs> and atheism, atheist comedy at that. <laughs> atheist comedy, that's right. And I know that it's the worst probably as a comedian to ask some, someone to ask you to do a joke, so I won't do that. But I'll ask you, <laughs> what are some of your, uh, you're not a monkey, but what are some yeah. of your, um, I, I guess, what are some of the inspirations for your comedy when it comes to atheism? Oh, well, I mean, look, let's be honest, religion, it's like a never ending source of comedy. You know, it just, it's crazy, right? From like talking snakes and uh, just crazy things like the things that God tells you to do and, and, and what you're not meant to do. And all the time, this person isn't real. You're trying to please this imaginary being. It's, it's like the ultimate abusive relationship to me, you know? And, and so, Comedy with atheism, uh, my, my type of, my style of comedy before I did the atheist comedy was just pointing out the truth, you know, like, you, you know, the story of Sleeping Beauty where the prince, you know, climbs in through her window and kisses her, which is breaking and entering and sexual assault, you know, <laughs> like uh, uh, to me. And, and so, you know, going into atheism, it's like, you know, I love fairy tales. I love Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. I also love the Bible. That's a fairy tale. So it, I, because my, my kind of comedy is just pointing out the truth that I, uh, I think a lot of people don't necessarily see that religion, let's be honest, just it's, it's perfect for that type, of, that type of comedy. It sounds like, in a sense, your, your take on, on atheist comedy might be a little simpler to uh, George Carlin, uh, George yeah, he's amazing. Carly. Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like uh, he did the same thing. He pointed out like a lot of the I mean, I guess to anyone on the outside of all of humanity, mm. they might look at it and say, "My god, this is insane." But uh, yes. when I when I yes. see it, even when you mentioned to me just now about atheist comedy, I, you know, I was mm. thinking atheist comedy, was she going to be talking about conventions or or a bunch of yeah. atheists hanging around <laughs> at a skeptics pub or something but no you're you're talking yeah. you're talking about actual satire yeah i think that's what it is and it's actually focusing on and my my the thing that i i guess the differentiation i like to make with my comedy is i like to focus on making fun of the beliefs um, but I, I don't want to necessarily disparage every person who's religious, you know. So I think it's that sort of that delicate balance of, you know, being funny but not an asshole, if you know what I mean. Like, now in saying that, Ken Ham, you're allowed to say whatever you want about him. But, <laughs> but um, don't, don't yeah, forget I, Ray Comfort, right? Oh, so embarrassing. Ken Ham's from Australia. Ray Comfort's from New Zealand. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed to be here. You know, <laughs> like, oh God, what terrible exports. Yeah, but they're not there. So maybe you guys are yeah. actually more clever than we think. I mean, look at Canada. Yeah, exactly. Justin Bieber, right? Oh, I, oh, his, oh no. Oh, I'm going to get rid of off Justin. podcast. Oh, I like love, Justin you Bieber. You love Justin Bieber? Okay. I don't love him, but I like him. You I'm, like I'm him? about to be, you're about to cut me off and say, oh, we've lost the connection. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, it's okay. I, 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 I kind of like uh, Lady Gaga too, so I guess yeah, it's I, I, I like Gaga as well. Yeah, we'll cut this out of the podcast. We don't want anyone to know this stuff. <laughs> We're li seriously losing our cred here. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I'm just interested, uh, what's your religious background? Are, is your family religious yeah. or, or are they are they atheist or how does that work? Yeah, my family background, if you say, are they, did, was I brought up an atheist? It's like, well, yes, I was brought up an atheist and no, I wasn't. I was brought up very religiously. Um, both my parents are, are atheists, but my, my dad was born before World War II, so he's a much, much older dad. He was brought up a strict Catholic. And so as we were being brought up, even though he renounced the Catholic Church, didn't really believe in God, we were still, <laughs> we were still brought up under that very strict sort of guilt, sin, Catholic uh, structure, so that if you made a mistake, you know, it was... It was sort of seen as a sin and bad, even though my father's a very gentle man. And 
religion was all pervasive in the house, even though nobody really believed in God because, and it was when I really began to become a full-blown atheist was when I saw how destructive the Catholic upbringing had been on my father to the point where this gentleman still felt that if he made a mistake, it was a sin. Uh, he's nearly 80 now. He's still scared of hell, even though he doesn't think it's true. And so it was a very interesting upbringing, a very kind father, very lovely father, but still unable to break the bonds of Catholicism, even though he didn't believe in God. I called Catholic guilt the guilt that keeps giving. So that was my very, very interesting upbringing. And it had a huge effect on, on how I feel about religion because I saw the, the very destructive, very abusive side of it. It, it had basically... It's like my dad has suffered psychological child abuse to still at 80 almost being scared of hell, even though he doesn't believe in it. I mean, that's crazy and, yeah, it's pretty toxic. So that, yeah. so that was my religious slash atheist upbringing. Um, it, was, it was quite interesting. You had a deconversion, I, I take it. Do you, do you still have any um, hang-ups or, or are, you just, uh, are you kind of over that now? in this sense? Were you ever afraid of hell or any of these things? I was never afraid of hell. I was always brought up to believe that God didn't exist. <laughs> but oh. yeah, that was why it was so interesting. I was brought up to believe that God didn't exist, but still religion was a big part of the household. It's like my dad couldn't quite let go of you know, I guess it is that religious indoctrination, sort of, you know, get a child before seven. It's like he had scars, you know. It's like literally, yeah, like, fit, totally. like emotional, psychological, and he still has though has psychological scars. Like, I was brought up to believe that there's no God, but my dad was still scared of hell at eighty, almost eighty. He's still scared of hell, and I remember saying to him, "Why would you go to hell? What are they going to send you to hell for?" what, eating too many chocolates and reading too many model railway magazines? I mean, come on, that's, that's it. That's all you do with your life. Like, um, but it's that in childhood indoctrination, you know, get a child before seven and you have him for life. Well, I see that very clearly with that, that old school strict Catholicism. Um, it still has a hold on him. It's so crazy to be scared of hell when you don't believe in God. But that's... That's that's what I saw growing up, and and my dad is still like that. Tell me about uh, the the scene in uh, Australia. Like I actually yeah. read that it's a very very secular country, more secular than Canada. I mean, in certain yeah. aspects. Um, so I mean, how does atheist comedy go over in Australia if almost yeah. everybody is an atheist? Well, here's the really interesting thing. Like, it, it is a very secular country, though our government hasn't quite caught up. You know, we still don't have gay marriage. I, I think abortion might still be illegal in Queensland. I'm not sure. Um, when I started comedy, and this is the really interesting thing, when I started comedy, um, as I said, over seven years ago, it was cool to kind of do atheist stuff and people would laugh what I've noticed as the years have gone by as we had a more conservative government come in and a more religious government is people are still as secular, but they're a little more nervous about laughing at atheist stuff in case they offend someone religious who might be in the room. And that's a really interesting shift that I've noticed happen. Um, and, it, and it sort of goes with the, it almost goes with whether the government is more religiously conservative or not this fear of, oh my gosh, if I laugh, will I offend someone? Probably not. Probably everybody else in the room is an atheist, but everyone seems a little more timid and not wanting to, to hurt anybody who's religious, hurt their feelings. Wow, really? Yeah. So I understand what you said about not knowing about uh, abortion, but it kind of I find it astonishing that... Um that gay marriage is not not allowed yet in in No, it's it's Australia. so not allowed. It's still such a huge debate. Um and that's where I mean like we are a very secular country but we don't have gay marriage. That to me is 
insane. That's why in Australia we were so excited when the US got gay marriage because we're like, oh, finally we might get it. You know, I think we had it for a day and then it was revoked. Um, <laughs> so really, and then only in one state and it, then it was revoked, I think, after a day or two. So in that respect, though, we're very secular. The government hasn't caught up. Um, it is very behind. And as I said, I've noticed in the comedy rooms that as the government's gotten more conservative, people have become a little bit more scared to laugh. Um which I think is another reason why I started doing the web show as well, because I was noticing this slight shift in Australian society, and I didn't think it was a particularly healthy shift. No, that is pretty strange. And so so how does the school system work over there in, in Australia? I mean, do they have religious schools, or, or, or does yeah. that get funded by the government, or is that separate? Do you know? Yeah, I do. I, I actually, before I started comedy, um, when I was working as a performer, I also taught singing at schools. And the government schools are secular, though they still have religious education. Um, so that's and you have to, uh, you actually have to, as a parent, um, write an official letter to say that you don't want your child to get religious education. Otherwise, they will get indoctrinated into the Christian religion, even though the rest of the school might be secular. Uh, but the schools that I taught at were actually religious schools of all <laughs> of all things. I taught at um, one of the most religious Catholic girls' schools in the in the uh, in the country, actually, and that was really interesting because I, I would sometimes have to go and pick up my primary school students from their classroom, and I'd knock on the door, get the student, and what was happening in the classroom is they'd be having relaxation meditation time, and that meditation was a tape all about indoctrinating them into believing in Jesus and how Jesus loves them and that if they're, you know, they have to be good for Jesus. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to teach during Mass. The whole school stopped once a week for Mass. Um, I had to get every song that the kids sung at a concert, I had to just get double-checked so that it wouldn't offend uh, the religious parents and the, and, the, and the nun that would always come to the concerts. So... In Again, Australia is a really interesting uh, sort of um, dichotomy of, yes, it's very secular, but then you've got these incredibly religious schools and even the government schools have religious education, which you have to formally write a letter to say that your child is not allowed to be taught that religion. Uh, so it's, it's very, it's, it's really, it's a really interesting country to be in, actually, from a religious point of view I, or an atheist point of view. I'm not sure how I... I would cope with working at a school like that, or I, although I did actually apply, yeah. I actually applied oh, wow. to, to work at a, a, a for an IT department at a Catholic girls' school. I think that they decided that they didn't want a twenty-year-old <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. Working oh, at God, their no. all-girls high school yeah. in their IT department. I yeah, don't know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. In your actual weekly uh, YouTube videos, um, I noticed that you have a theme. Every week you have a theme. Recently, I noticed that it was people that you wanted to have voted off the planet, sort of like Big Brother. Yeah, yeah. I sort of I have one episode where there's a song, and then the during a season, and then the alternate episode. Uh, is where I do a bit of stand-up finding uh, like someone or some group that's done something spectacularly ridiculous to do with religion and I just kind of vote them off the planet, you know. <laughs> um, like I voted uh, Ken Ham off the planet, obviously. Um, but also just uh, crazy things like, you know, certain um, websites, you know, a religious organisations say that, you know, science is a version of the god of the gaps argument and I'm like no it's just not and so I do a sort of a comedy sort of thing pointing out the differences between that um and that sort of seems to be my style as I say I, I do enjoy voting people off the planet that's enjoyable <laughs> and you know when it comes to the comedians uh, they are atheists or they are yeah. secular in fact uh, I think that your brain need, may need to be wired up a certain way to be a comedian, and you just you see you see things a certain way. 
it's part of your comedy. It's like there needs to be some sort of grain of truth, and you can't just make things up willy nilly. I don't believe. So maybe you know, part of being a comedian or maybe a good comedian might involve these critical skills or these questioning skills or a certain amount of cynicism, whatever you want to call it. So that it could be that there are rather a lot of of atheist comedians out there. They just happen to be comedians who happen to be atheists. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think it's, I think you write about the comedy brain. You've sort of got to be able to cut through the bullshit, I think, to be funny. Um, though I have, I have, you know, met Christian comedians who are hilarious as well, but, but you always come up against that wall of, uh, I think the thing that I find most frustrating with religion and which I think is why it suits my comedy is I, 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 I like the truth and I find when it's uh, something's untruthful, I get frustrated and I, I kind of, I don't quite know how to deal with it in a way. So I think comedy is my way of dealing with this sort of elephant in the room of religion, which is, yeah, but it's not true. It's just. (laughs) Exactly. And I mean, uh, if you were to take a lot of these religions and if you were to simply say, okay, uh, we're going to change the name. So rather than the, rather than calling this the Catholics, we're going to, oh, I don't know. We're going to say the Realians or something do this because yeah, they're, they're a UFO yeah, yeah. cult here in Quebec, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I know about them. So mm-hmm. if you say that, then all of a sudden it becomes hilarious. Absolutely bonkers. Exactly. What? Those yeah. those goofballs. But then if you say something like, but there's this other religion out there and they've got this place and they all have to turn towards it and say a prayer every day. And then yep. once during their lives, they have to go to this place and there's this big black cube there with a rock on the side of it right and and it's like what insane and yeah yeah but you know because it happens because it happens to be you know believed in by billions of people oh you can't you can't go there you can't touch that you can't that. go there and if you do we're going to kill you you know it's like <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> yeah don't you don't you diss our black cube or your head will come off i'm like oh that's insane well even so i mean as an atheist if i were to go to uh see the kaaba in uh, yeah. in the hajj i mean if they found out i were an atheist uh, <laughs> chop chop right exactly exactly it's that and that to me is and I think that to me is one of the reasons why I think being open about atheism, obviously not there, not in that situation. but I not, mean, not when your right? head's in the, on the line. Not when exactly. your head's on the line. But I think being open about atheism generally in a, when you're not in a dangerous situation is so important because, yeah, we've got it pretty good in the Western world. But when you start getting into more Middle Eastern countries – Religion just causes so many problems. I mean, it causes a lot of problems in the Western world, but you know, when you look at the Middle Eastern world, it's just, it's so damaging. It's so dangerous. And it's just awful, really, for everyone, particularly the women and children. And that's where I think being openly atheist is so important. Um, and I, I don't really go along with the thing that I think quite a few people have said to me, which is, Oh, well, everyone's entitled to their beliefs. You shouldn't really make fun of it. And I'm like, well, no, I think if that belief has no scientific proof attached to it and can have long-term damaging effects to not just individuals but the world and, I mean, even getting people to believe in climate change, then no, I think atheism's pretty important, you know. And I think it's an interesting fact when people say, you know, I've, have, I've had that thing of people say, oh, well, it's cultural. And I sort of look back at my, my heritage is, um, you know, a lot of my heritage is Irish and some of the Irish clans way, way back from my Irish clans, um, one of the Irish clans that I, I originate from, it was cultural to cut off the breasts of your, uh, the, the other tribe that you're fighting against, cut off the breasts of their women. Well, that was cultural back then. I'm like, well... Well, if that's part of my heritage, can I say that's cultural now? I don't like someone I cut off their breast. No. So cultural, I don't think cultural really is an argument. Like there's good stuff in culture and stuff that's not so good. And just because you've been doing it for a while, to me, doesn't give it a free pass. And I think people sometimes, they sometimes miss that 
cultural or historical doesn't always equal healthy and helpful for society. You, you could look back at Western culture, you could look back 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, and are we really saying that think how things were back then are were just, hey, why did we even change it? We we should just go right on back. Uh, uh, let's let's ditch women's suffrage and let's yeah, uh, yeah, I don't bring back slavery. Vote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think I think it's an interesting thing. Um, I do find it interesting that there are a certain, I guess, a certain type of well, even atheists who don't think that you should say anything against religion. Um, and, and it's not something that I quite understand. It's always baffled me. You might understand it better than me. I've never quite understood that that argument from atheists, sort of not wanting to offend offend anyone. It could be like being a Canadian. Uh, like, <laughs> as a Canadian, I don't want to offend yeah. anyone, right? Um, ah, right. Interesting. So it could be out of politeness, I find, but it could ah, also be yeah. out of... Um, I think there could be a level of either laziness there or some sort of um, feeling of superiority. So there, if it's superiority, then it could be like, well, atheism works for people like me, but maybe <laughs> for maybe for those brown folks over there, atheism oh. just doesn't work, right? <laughs> yeah, that yeah, could be yeah. it, right? They're so tied to their culture, whatever. And yeah. then another one could simply be, um, you know all this talk gives me a headache. Why don't I do my thing and they do their thing and that's it, right? So that that's kind of where I see it. I don't know if that's close yeah, or not to the truth. <laughs> okay, so I mean, is there anywhere uh, listeners could go to uh, hear some of this comedy? Is it on uh, YouTube? All of it's on YouTube. Uh, the, it's actually, there's an episode out every week on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube uh, and type in the Bible and other fairy tales, uh, it's also on my website, thebibleandotherfairytales.com has all of the videos. And you know, there's songs, there's also straight stand up, and all of it's focused on <laughs> making fun of religion. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for being on the podcast, Linda. No, thank you. I had a blast. <laughs>